Hi, my name is Alexander Bogle. Hi, my name is Trevor Reynolds. Hi, I'm Heather Trainer. Jay Freeman. Sheldon Razor. Hi, I'm Michael Morgan, and I'm an operations analyst at Cigna Healthcare. I'm Jeff Capel. My name's uh, Reese Daniels, and I work at Cigna. I'm a geek at Cigna Healthcare. I work at Cigna, and I am out and proud. Unfortunately, I did not grow up in a welcoming community. Uh, we were very rural. I lived in a very small town in western Connecticut. I grew up in uh, Indiana. It's not very progressive. I actually did um, dance for 10 years, uh, ballet for five. I like dancing and dolls and stuff, so I was more involved with like musical theater. I like to play golf, I like to swim. Soccer, uh, baseball, wrestled in high school. My favorite thing was music. Junior high, uh, basketball teams. I love to read by myself because that was my own world. Records and books, so I wasn't I wasn't the sports kid that my dad really wanted me to be. My parents put us in baseball every time the enrollment for summer baseball would come around. I would just cry. In my family, we didn't talk a lot. Uh, we didn't share a lot of feelings. I am one of eight boys, no girls, in an Irish Catholic family going to a Catholic high school and a Catholic father who went to church every day and realizing at 14 years old that I think I might be gay. I was like, oh my God. There was one gay guy, one openly gay guy, and he was called, his name was Reggie, and he became a noun. Don't be, you know, you're, you're a Reggie. I always knew I was different, um, but I didn't understand the difference. I felt like one of the guys, but then once you get older in like high school and everything, you start to feel the differences, the conversations in the locker room, stuff like that change. I didn't really know what it was because at that time, Unlike today, we didn't have any role models. I knew from when I was in kindergarten that I was just a little different. I liked boys in a very different way than my friends. There was this girl who was awful to me, and I kept trying to figure out, like, you know, why, why did I still talk to her? And I was like, oh, duh, because you had a crush on her. I acted like other girls should act. Nobody around me really knew who I was. I just remember as a kid being told, you're not holding your fork the right way. You need to hold it more manly. I didn't hold my books like this, up like here. I hold them down here because that's what men do. When I got into my junior year and senior year, and I kind of just stuck to weightlifting and stayed pretty much on my own. I really avoided team sports because team sports just brought on this whole world of stuff I didn't want to get into. I was bullied throughout the years just because I was different. In high school, I got pushed into lockers. I would get beat up and I'd get thrown into lockers. I dated girls because it was safe and I still got beat up. I chose to stay in the closet. I said, I, I saw what happens to all these other people, and I said I didn't want that happening. It felt like uh, I was mentally ill or something was happening. I didn't actually tell my parents I was gay until I was 35. And my mom knew, but my dad didn't. And he said, it's gonna take me a while to get used to that you're not you know, you know, get married and whatnot, but you're my son and I love you. We were having a dialogue and he was saying, you know, why don't you bring girlfriends home? You know, why aren't you dating anyone? I just flat out told him, you know, Dad, I'm gay. He started asking questions like, well, how do you know, you know, have you, you, you haven't dated pretty enough girls. My best friend in college, uh, I finally got the courage to tell her who I was. And we were very, very close. I was gonna drive back to, to school uh, he, he stepped out in front of the uh, car in the driveway and say, get out of this car. You're no longer worth my time or my investment. And based on knowing this one aspect of me, she decided that I was this totally different person uh, who couldn't be trusted. I always felt um, that it was not enough, that, that identifying the way that I did, I was never going to be straight enough and I was never going to be gay enough. The emotional toll of being, you know, disconnected from your family that you've known to love. You know, I wasn't in the best of spots personally. I kind of figured out when I was younger in college that I was gay, but I was in denial. My true friends always just said, well, you're not gay, you're Michael. If part of the package that is Michael means that you happen to like other men, that's okay. I came out to myself in college. 
I, I began to investigate more about what I was feeling, uh, women that I actually loved. When I finally decided to come out, I was coaching high school cheerleading. They would ask me, do I have a girlfriend? And I would kind of shirk around the subject. And then I kind of thought, well, then I'm not being true to myself to them. And if they're looking up to me as a role model, then they need to know that it's that if I'm if I'm gay, it's okay. And it was a long, long time before I, I even came out to my family. Basically, they implied they knew all, the, all along, and it was about time I figured it out. My brothers um, were always very supportive. I'm always kind of just uh, willing to listen. I remember the first time that um, I had a serious relationship, and, and I was talking to my brother, and I said, hey, you know, do you wanna, do you wanna go grab dinner at this restaurant? My girlfriend works there. Um, and he just kind of was like, okay. One Christmas, I brought one of my first um, relationships home with me for Christmas. And I thoroughly expected when I went into the house that we would be in separate bedrooms uh, because I'd never talked about being gay and never talked about having relationships. And my mother came upstairs with us and she says, the two of you will be in this bedroom. That was kind of the first inkling, even though we had never spoke of it, that she knew and that um, it was okay. I went away to college. There were LGBT couples, um, partnerships with successful, um, you know, lives, and I realized that, wow, you can actually be a functioning member of society and be gay. I began to say to myself, you know, the people who have issues with me being gay are, is not the people that I really want to be around. I'm still coming out of my own shell at, um, you know, 26 years old. I think that's the, be the best thing about getting older, um, is you really can kind of push back and say, no, this is, this is who I am, uh, this is how I feel. It will get better, and the crap that you're going through now will just be a blip on your radar. Most of the things that you're going through in terms of the hiding of yourself and the depression that comes with it is something that most of us go through. I was in your shoes. It will, it will get better. It, it, it will. You need to be here to help the people behind you. Anybody who feels like it doesn't get better, it does. And it does in an evolutionary kind of way. It's not gonna change if you don't do something to make it better. It could be as simple as you know, taking up a new hobby or a new sport. It could be as significant as a move or a job change. Use social media, you know, start reaching out, find meetup groups. Sometimes going forward feels like going backward. It may not get 100%, you know, you might only get two today, you could get four tomorrow and, and, and that's okay. And that's still winning. All your trials and tribulations, as big as they seem at the time, once you get past them and you look back, you go, well, that helped me make me the person I am today, and I'm better for it. It takes more strength for you to be who you are in this world than a lot of other people. So the minute you do accept yourself and come out, you're, you're that much more powerful. I started living my true self, you know, being my true self. My parents started realizing that, you know, they either have to get on this train or not get on at all. Now you can be out and you can be proud. I have a rainbow sticker at my desk. You can't have everything in the world that your straight counterparts can have. Being gay is not a sin. It's not some abomination. You are perfect just the way you are. Being you is enough, whatever that means for you. I'm very comfortable with who I am and very unapologetic as to the fact that yes, I am a gay male and I'm very happy with my life. I am out and I can tell you that 2016 is a wonderful time to be LGBT. Other people's stories aren't going to mirror your stories. It's a spectrum and it's okay to fall kind of dead set in the middle and I'm, and I'm comfortable where I've landed. I'm pretty comfortable with myself right now and where I am in life. Now I'm you know, engaged to the love of my life. I'm happily married for a couple of years now with the same person I've been in a relationship with for over 20 years. Um, and it truly does get better. Be kind to yourself, trust yourself, and just allow yourself to see where it goes.